right, so I'm heading to the lettuce house. A lot of people have um, questions on the hydroponic side of the business. So Wayne is going to explain. We have Ethan here, working hard. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Yeah, we just thought we would uh, review and show you an update of the greenhouse. It's fall here now, so you know we've had a few frosts. But the weather the last two weeks has been nicer than we've had all summer, so we've had to make a few adjustments again regarding nutrients and things like that and shade cloth and things. So I thought we'd go right to start because I just had a bunch of questions this week on different varieties and how to get things started. And that's probably the most important part in here. A healthy plant at the start usually means a healthy plant right to the finish. So, so here we've got a... A seed tray. We use Oasis here. We find it very easy to work with. Uh, roots really well. Uh, the pH balance right off the bat. So, uh, I mean, I seeded these three to four days ago, and you can see them all. So pretty tell well, them what you have in 100 here. 100% germination. This is a seed called Muir. Now I know you, you can watch all kinds good. of videos, and they tell you the Boston or the Bib is the most popular one, but. I just think it's whatever suits you and your market. For me, the Muir, which is a leaf lettuce, sells outsells all my other lettuces 10 to 1. Uh, it grows much nicer, and you'll see as we get in the greenhouse, we're putting out, on average, one pound heads of lettuce to the market. And I mean, it depends on who your customers are, too. We don't do a lot of wholesaling. We try to concentrate on retailing only and our family food program. So that's why you'll see a lot of different things in here that we're, we, we do a lot of experimenting too so that uh, we can actually stay away from the grocery store if we can. Okay, well we'll start with the, the germination and the heat table we have here. I've got a heat mat here. Now I have some cilantro that is a very slow to germinate, but they're poking through now. So probably tomorrow I will put these down in the bottom trays. Nice. Once I see a little bit of green, I get them out of here because what happens, the water's stagnant in these trays. And that's not the healthiest thing for your, your seedlings. So two or three days. Here's some basil that I planted. I think Monday or Tuesday night. It's just starting now. But you could see within two weeks later, you can see over here, there's some basil. This is about, uh, it's about three weeks old now. And as you go through, you'll see different plantings at different stages. Basil's a huge, huge product. People love it. It grows so well in here that uh, we, we keep it here all the time, as much as we can. Okay guys, here's our, our from our heat table down to our germination and nursery setup. Uh, you can see how well they're growing under here. I'd like to pull one out to show you, but it's actually running right now. You can see the water. It runs three times a day, 15 minutes at a time. We can go over here, you can just see how nice this is. There's so these some, ones are ready to go into the yeah, nursery today, now? Yeah, Ethan's actually transplanting right now, and we're gonna transplant these today. There's some. Romaine, some red romaine, again the Muir, some Boston back there. More basil. More basil. Basil and cilantro are just, we can't keep grow enough of it. I don't have space to grow enough of it. It just sticks at the market itself. Phenomenal. So, uh, I mean, you need this. We have cool white lights under here. There's no heat coming off them. Uh, and you can see the Explain to them another question we had was how, how you run this. Like with your tank, you have that little yeah, pump just, and a tote. You look under here, I've just got a 20 gallon tote I bought at the Home Home Depot. And inside there's just an aquarium pump. I set this whole thing up for about $50, other than the trays, which I got from American Hydroponics. And check them out. They've been a fabulous resource for me to get to where we are now. Uh, some good products, especially the specialty items that you can't find at your regular hardware store that they have all the specialty items. I mean it's worth giving them a call. They're really good people to work with. So before we do a little walk around I'll show you basically the products we use in here. Right now we use a product called Cease and that's your biological fungicide. It helps your plants. It's really good for powdery mildew in the fall when you got that high humidity and it's you know it's an organic product so we dip every one as we transplant. We only do it once and that's it. And someone was asking about the root conditioner, so. Yeah, well here's the product we're using right now. And I know there's several out there, but this works well. And it's a, it's a kelp product, so it's totally organic. See in here. Yeah. And basically all I do is use one capful. Every time I plant, seed my trays, 
I take a liter of water or a quart of water in, your, in a lot of cases and I put a cap of this in, this essential it's called, essential plus, and I just pour it over the seeds and that's it. And that's basically the only watering that that whole tray gets. So you water on top, you yeah, don't water underneath. In, and then I don't water this tray again until it goes down into the automatic setup. And that's uh, basically what we do. So, you know, it's pretty simple. There's not a lot of products in here. So here's the fertilizer we use. It's a high grade mineralized fertilizer from plant products. Uh, they're a big company in Canada, but they're in the U.S. as well. And you could, this is what you want to know here. Mm -hmm. That and uh, greenhouse grade calcium, and that's it as far as nutrients go. Uh, you have to learn, I think, to play with it yourself. You know, we run our greenhouse at 1-2 all summer. Come the, the fall, we start creeping it up, and that's basically on the weather. Cloudy days, shorter days. We're running now, now it's mid-September. We've bumped it up to 1-4. Another two or three weeks, we'll bump it up to 1.6 possibly and 1.8. We go to 1.8, and that's pretty well where we sit for the winter. Uh, we still have the shade cloth on. Uh, it'll probably come off in another week or two. And, uh, oh, you want to show them the uh, Yes, and, that's, and the then the, the last thing we do, of course, we don't use any herbicides because there's no weeds in this system, but you do get bugs. And basically, in our greenhouse, it's aphids that we have to keep under control. So we do two things. We've brought in ladybugs a couple times, but we really find these work. This is called an aphid eliminator, oh, which we get from the natural, natural Insect Control Company. And all of this is a little wasp or nymph that hatches. It comes as an egg and it hatches. And you see I've cut the corner of the container open. Are there so, any hatching right no, now? No, they've all hatched see? this week. They're all they're all gone now. Is this our new? Yes, this came shipping? in on Wednesday. Okay, I'll just zoom in to kind of. Yeah, they just come in some vermiculite and they start hatching. I don't know if there's any. Yeah, they've all hatched. So basically, there was a thousand of them in here, and we have this come in every three weeks, and that keeps our aphids under control. So we'll take a little walk through, and we can show you uh, some things that are going on here. Here's our nursery. You can see this is a space saving. Uh, troughs where we've got 60 to 64 plants per trough. And of course those today will be going into finishing troughs. Uh, most of these will be ready to transplant into the finishing troughs on Monday. Ethan's working on some today. Some of the different varieties we have here are Muir, this is the Green Forest, the Romaine, uh, some green leaf, uh, green, green leaf right here. Select the Red Romaine. Yeah, the red romaine. Lots of cilantro here. We have four trays. We plant four trays every week. This is this week's. There's last week's. And farther down, you'll see some other. Gin and Eve basil. Again, these are some that just didn't have room for it, so we're sort of holding them on instead of throwing <coughs> them out. This basil as well. Um, this basil is really nice for pesto. That's the best basil for yeah. pesto. I know, Elwood, you were wondering what kind of kale we had. So this is scotch, dwarf scotch, curly kale. Farther back I have some Swiss chard started. Uh, so there's uh, that bright lights. Yeah. Arugula. There's another big crop. Every week we plant another four trays of arugula. With the restaurants use it quite a bit that we sell to. Our food program and again the market. Very easy harvesting too. Uh, we get <coughs> about three cuttings off every tray. So that translates into about seven to eight pounds per tray time we're done. And, you know, we're getting about ten, nine, ten dollars a pound, up to sixteen at the market. So you know it's a quite lucrative crop to grow. And a quick turnover. I way down here. Here's some Boston lettuce. Uh, green forest romaine. Some red romaine. We do a lot of mix here, salad mix. So we do. We have more varieties than we really would like, but because of the mix, that uh, it's nice to have those different colors and different textures for everybody. So we'll take a quick walk through. And again, I had a fella uh, text me this morning, Chuck from Fenster Farms, wanting to know how I schedule everything. And I guess it depends on who your customers are, because we do a lot at the farmers market. We know roughly every week, yesterday we had our farmer's market, 
uh, from eight to, to one. And we went through about 400 heads of lettuce. So, and that was by noon. We were sold out long before the market was over. So it depends on who you are, if our scheduling goes. Uh, I mean, if you're wholesaling, you know exactly what goes out every week. You can do it a little different. But if you look around in here, we have every different color and texture of lettuce because it's, it's... Well, uh, it's beautiful in the mix yeah. as well. Yeah. So here's some red romaine again. I like this. A lot of um, restaurants and resorts use the red romaine when they're small as, um, yeah, a as a, yeah, a one-piece salad or their centerpieces. Some more arugula. This will be all gone this week. And this is going to be the last cutting for this, you can tell. So we're yeah. just going to cut off the tops and then empty the trays. Here we go down the here. Kale. The kale crop. We need, we already know we need about 50 to 60 pounds of kale every week for our food program and our market and the actual sales will actually go up starting next month when the winter market starts and, and we'll be the only one maybe one other fellow with with kale at the market so this is the, the, the scotch dwarf scotch curly kale phenomenal producer uh, we've been produ harvesting off this patch since probably march you know so you figure that out 50 60 pounds a week over the last six months <clears throat> and it's yeah. easy harvesting as well like see let me just break off so there's no you don't have to do any very, cutting very tender yeah. you know so very nutritious and then on this side we've got our forest of swiss chard believe it or not we've been harvesting off this patch since christmas again 60 70 pounds a week depending on uh, you know what uh, food program and we have a few customers that we know come every second week to the market and want lots of Swiss chard for one here. reason or the other but it just keeps giving. And then, again this is bright lights as well. It's beautiful and we have a ton of it. So we'll walk down this side you can see some year just starting off. That's about four weeks old now so two weeks that'll be ready to go. The green forest is a beautiful romaine, beautiful romaine lettuce. Lots of weight in that too when you put it in the mix or as a head. I'll just take a quick walk through. Here's some basil that'll be ready. It'll be ready next Saturday to go to the market. And we we sell this living. So we yeah. pull it out, cut the root, and then uh, clean it up and put it in bags. And people just love it. The reds are really beautiful this time of year. Lots of sun. They're really darkening up actually. We have Ethan here. He's doing some transplanting this morning for us. Say hi, Ethan. Hi. Good job, bud. As you can see from here down, this mirror is all for the market on Wednesday. That's a lot of lettuce going. Yeah. And we know this is a guaranteed seller. People just love the look of this lettuce. The flavor, the shelf life is phenomenal. You know, I have people come back two weeks later and tell me this lettuce is still good. We're always trying to do some experimenting. So here I've got some celery growing. You know, I'm, waiting, I'm hoping it's going to fill out a little more, but it's looking pretty good. I mean, I'd love to be able to grow this and put this in our food program or offer it in the winter months. <clears throat> nice height, but I don't imagine it would get very stocky because of the hole, right? Yeah, well, I don't know. We'll have to wait see. It's done much better than I expected, actually. It's a lot, uh, a lot more green than the stuff I have down in the raised beds. Nice. If there's anybody out there that's got any experience with spinach, I'd sure like to hear from you. I would love to be able to grow spinach in this system. I've tried a few things without any success. It's mainly on the germination, but uh, I'd still like to get into more spinach. A lot of people ask me for it. And here's some more basil. Beautiful crop of basil coming along. So another 10 days, 12 days, it'll be ready to go to the market. Want some kale? Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any more questions, you know, just... Shoot us a message and Patty would be happy to get back to you. Thank you.